So we've got a few questions in here. The first question, Master, is there a difference between banana and banana? Well, what it shows in here is the second word has diacritical on it. You know diacritical? There's no difference. You know what's banana? Banana is your consciousness. The study of the school of all your Vinanas, or in the Sanskrit word, is Vichnanavadan. Vichnanavadan school, we see sure, Vichnanavadan school is the study of your consciousness. So there's no difference between banana and banana in here. That answers the first question. Second question When we chant Namo Tassa Bhagavato, isn't it the same as Namo Sakamoni Buddha? It is not the same. Yes, it is the same. <laughs> Why don't we just take the first part of the question of the answer? No, it is not the same. Because all Buddhas have a common name. Bhagavato is a common name for Buddha. The world honor one. The, the, the Buddha has ten epithets. The Buddha, the enlightened one, the Bhagavato, the um, oh lots of them. Ten names. So, Namo Tassa Bhagavato, that means Namo is to take refuge under. Tassa Bhagavato is to take refuge under the enlightened one, the world honor one, which is a common name. In other words, taking refuge under the Buddha, the, 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 the enlightened one, the world honor one. On the other hand, Namo Sakyamuni Buddha is the name of a specific Buddha. Sakyamuni Buddha, the name of Sakyamuni Buddha. Sakyamuni Buddha was a prince 2,600 years ago in India. He was a prince. He gave up his throne to be the king and became an ascetic and became a monk in search of this spiritual liberation. He wanted to be free from our suffering. Not only him, himself, wanted to be free, he wanted to find a way to free not only himself, all sentient beings from suffering. So he's on his path to look for that spiritual liberation. He spent a number of years in the forest, learning meditation, and finally he succeeded. He became the enlightened one. So his name, when he became enlightened, is called Sakyamuni Buddha. It's a specific Buddha name. Just like Amitabha Buddha is a specific name of the, the Buddha of immeasurable light or the Buddha of infinite life. So it's a specific name. But Namadasa Bhagavato is a common name. All Buddhas. How many Buddhas are there? Millions of Buddhas. Those who are already enlightened are Buddhas. They are the enlightened Buddhas. We are the future Buddhas. You. You have that potential to be the Buddha. Do you want to be the Buddha? Interestingly, I asked some teenagers when they came for, for a tour in here. After explaining all Buddha, the, the terms of the Buddha and what emancipation of suffering means, I said, who wants to be the Buddha? Nobody raised his hand. <laughs> you know why? Because they thought that the Buddha has to be in that shrine, locked himself up in there. I don't want to be locked up in the shrine. I don't want to be locked up in a wooden statue in there. So I don't want to be Buddha. So that's what? That's ignorance. Because you've got to fully understand what Buddhism is all about. Buddhism is all about. So, it is the same. It is not the same. Commonly, it's the same. Specifically, it's not the same. So, what do we do? So, we chant the common name or the specific name? Well, in, in, in the um, Theravada school, when they first started any ceremony, they chanted the they chant that way, they chanted the party. Namadasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa. That is to pay respect to all Buddhas. 
not just to Sakyamuni Buddha, not just to Amitabha Buddha, not just to the Bodhisattvas, to all Buddhas, without any specific name. But if we want to be reborn in the Pure Land, we chant Namo Amitabha Buddha. Because we want our wish to be born, reborn in that land, to be tied up with the wish of Amitabha Buddha uh, calling us or recruiting us to be there. So, it's the same, it's not the same. Third question, does Om Mali Pami Home has the same meaning as Namatasa Bhagavato? No, it's not the same. Om Mani Padme Hom, it's called a mantra. It's called a mantra. Uh, what is a mantra? A mantra can also be called a dharani. What is, what is the meaning of a mantra? A dharani. When a mantra is long, it's called dharani. A short mantra, we, we sometimes refer to it as, the, as just, just a mantra. Dharani is to a memory aid or the summarization of all the important philosophy of Buddhism. And it's just like Om Mani Padme Hom, how does it help you to memorize the, 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 the teachings of the Buddha? Actually, Om Mani Padme Hom contains all Buddhism in there. Do you, know, do you realize that? It's the magic words for all Buddhism in Om Mani Padme Hom. What does Om mean? Om is the mother of all sounds, the mother of all good deeds. Om. Or simply to say, listen very carefully. Listen very carefully what the Buddha has to say. Om Mani Mani is the most precious jewel in you, which, is, which symbolizes the Buddha nature in you. The, everybody has a Buddha nature. Every sentient being has that Buddha nature, that potential of being enlightened to be the Buddha. That means listen very carefully. Every sentient being has the Buddha nature. Part man is, how do we enlighten ourselves? How do we have a revelation of that enlightenment? How do we get enlightened? That word tells you, part me. You have to be purified like a lotus flower. Part me is lotus flowers. A lotus flower grown from the mud. The mud symbolizes the world of suffering. We're living in the world of suffering, don't you know that? We're living in a world full of sufferings, but in order to be detached from sufferings, you must detach yourself from your own mental afflictions. You must stay away from jealousy, hatred, depression, fear, disappointment, anxiety, greediness, anger. Detach yourself from all those. Like just as a lotus flower is detached from the mud. Can you be that lotus flower? You can't just say about it. You have to practice as such. How do you purify yourself? You have to purify your behavior, your speech, and your mind. So does that include the whole Buddhist teaching in there? So part me, matni is to tell you the philosophy of truth. Part me is to tell you the practice, the practice to achieve that truth. What is home? Home is the planting of a, of a bodhicitta, a buddhi seed. Every time when you utter that Om Mani Padme, you are planting one impermanent, eternally residing in there, a Bodhi seed. Would that Bodhi seed be, be permanent in there? Nothing is, nothing is permanent. When that Bodhi seed is enlightened, we don't call it permanence or impermanence anymore. It's beyond permanence and impermanence. It's beyond thinking. It's inscrutable, inconceivable. Okay, that explains Om Mani Padme Hum. Next. As this is the weekend Canadians celebrate Thanksgiving, we wish to thank you for this temple, you, your wise teaching, and express our appreciation for the opportunity to learn and practice Buddhism from you and the Sangha. So, uh, yeah, on Monday, uh, what, what, what day is the Thanksgiving day? Monday. Monday? So Thanksgiving Day and the Canadian culture, and Thanksgiving Day is a time when everybody comes together and uh, they have this turkey uh, to, to eat. Well, of course, uh, uh, slaughtering animals for food uh, is not good, but, but that's a culture. 
when we look at this, we don't look at it with hatred. I don't like them, they slaughter turkeys for food. No, it's just a culture. Finally, they become the Buddha. Finally, they got enlightened. To speak my true feeling experiences without attachment of results is this flattery. I don't understand. To speak my true ex or feel experience without attachment of results it is flattery. I don't quite follow, but you can, you can, I believe I should be respectful and open, honest, and share openly. Can you clarify? I don't understand what it means. Yes? Um, when I hear you say um, speaking flattery, yeah. I'm unclear what you mean by that. Is, do, you, do you mean flattery with saying something kind or nice with not the true heart? No, flattery, if you are say, saying something that is contradictory to your own thinking. Say, say um, I don't like this guy, but I want to set up a good relationship with him. And every time when I see him, I really hate him because he, he got me into trouble. So every time I, I see him, I say, oh, good morning. How nice you are. But actually in his mind, is this guy, I don't like him. That's dishonest? That's dishonest. That is, you are, you're contradicting yourself in your feelings of expression. In other words, you, 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 if, you, if you saw a beggar in the street, how beautiful that guy is. Or, we used to, 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 to commit the same uh, fault when we were a teenager. When we were a teenager, I remember when I, in Hong, when I was in Hong Kong, uh, being a teenager, I was so rebellious and so against religion. And two or three teenagers walking by, and we, and we saw a, a beggar in shabby clothes. A beggar with hairs, you know, dirty hair that long. A man, dirty hair that long. And, you know, and when we saw, I remember when we saw a movie, it's called, um, about Christian movie. And we saw Jesus, and Jesus has long hair. And uh, a robe, and long hair. And we were passed by a beggar, and we said, oh, look at that Jesus. So that's, that's. That is, that is not right. How can you misuse the name of a saint and apply it to a beggar? Because he looks like, he looks like long hair with a rope and you call him Jesus. You understand? Now that is not flattery, that is double tonguing. That's not right. Okay, so if you're, if you're saying anything that contradicts your own feeling, then contradicts your mind, then that is flattery. Or double tongueing sometimes, in all cases. All right, answer these questions. Dear Abbot, could you tell us about the mantra we chant on the way to lunch when we leave the meditation center? We're not chanting a mantra. We're chanting Nam Omi Tofo. Nam Omi Tofo. We're chanting. We're taking refuge under Nam Omi Nam Amitabha, the, the Buddha of immeasurable light, even also called the the, the Buddha of immeasurable. Uh, life, longevity. Okay, next question. Why do we question why we are here? Why do we question why we are here? Why do we have to question why we're here? Since we're here, we just exist. Why do we have to question why we are here? The common ordinary people don't Every day I'm doing the same thing. I eat my breakfast, I eat my lunch, I go to work, I perform all these duties. Why do I have the questions why I'm here? I think we are living in a world that is so mystical. There's so many boundaries of thought that sometimes um, would induce us to think more about life. Induce us to think more about, is there any life before death? Is there any life after death? And what happened? Why I have to live this hundred years of existence now? And of course, I'm, going not, I'm not going through suffering. A lot of people go through a lot of suffering. Why do they have to suffer and then they die? And why do people die in, in early ages and why people die in later ages in life? And uh, a lot of whys I have. Don't you have some whys in life? Sometimes you questions, right? The question is why this exists, why this that? Because of the why we exist. If we don't have why, we never exist. Because of why, scientists research more. Why is two hydrogen 
with when oxygen becomes water. Why, why can't we see beyond sky? Why is my, my, why I, my, why are my eyes so limited in vision? Why the eagles can see miles, six miles away, when my eyes can only see about a mile away? Um, why are some children behave so politely and some are so rebellious? Why are some families so, so, so uh, uh, slightly tied together, very closely? And why are some marriages that work out to be so successful? And why are some marriages to be so unsuccessful? I want to find out why. Don't you have to find out why about something? And that leads to why we exist. If you go on asking why, then why we exist. I think we live in a world of why. It does not mean that we get hung up in why. It does not mean that we have got hung up in why that we don't do anything. We still work. We still research. We still work happily and, and doing things with confidence. But we want to find out a lot of whys. That's how the civilization progresses. That's how the cultures get betterment.